what's going on? It's Mr. Investor Today we're going to be discussing will Workhorse get the USPS contract? Before we begin, please hit that thumbs up for me and click subscribe. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Do your own research. So there's a number of things I'd like to discuss today. The first one being the USPS meeting today. The next one will be Oshkosh and their presentation that they released yesterday. And finally, we're going to be discussing Ford's electric vehicle. So first of all, we're going to be looking at this workhorse graph right here. Okay, so let's take a look at the workhorse group, my friend. So you can see we've had a massive run up over the course of six months, reaching a height of 3060. It's actually 3099. And since then, we've dropped around about 49% to a low of 1538 on Friday, the 30th of October. So let's take a look at this one month chart. So as you can see here, we've been going down, 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 bam, 30th of October, hit $15.38. And since then, we've risen 4%, 16%, had a drop of around 8%, and then back up 8%. So you've seen it's been a bit of a yo-yo ride until we get to this point where we're now building up and up, rising back up to maybe the 30s. So as you can see, the pre-market value is $21.30 as of today. And today is the USPS meeting. So we're going to see this probably run a lot in the meantime. Damn. So we just missed the USPS meeting. But if you wanted to watch it, there'll be an archive version available soon. So here we're getting into the Oshkosh Corporation presentation. I really wanted to review this because Oshkosh and Ford are one of the main competitors for Workhorse in this run up for the USPS contract. So as I was coming through this presentation, I wanted to see, you know, is there anything in here on the USPS contract or any hints and keys that they're actually in this industry and they're actively trying to go for last mile delivery vehicles. This is the part we wanted to look at here. So we're looking at broad industry leadership. So here we're looking at both their global and their North America rankings. So these guys uh, made a ranking system and they showed their company estimates. So it's the ranking according to themselves. So they believe they're ranked number one in several industries, including aerial work platforms and telehandlers. This is where they make the bulk of their money. So it's from construction access equipment and also access equipment in terms of uh, painting, murals, side of the buildings, cleaning gutters. Oshkosh Defense, so they're looking at military tactical wheel vehicles ranked number one also in this industry. With their North American market, they've also got fire apparatus. So this can be fire engines, fire trucks, all those kinds of equipments. They've also got airport products, including snow removal trucks, refuse collection vehicles. So that's including garbage trucks. Concrete mixer trucks also is something that they've been producing and electrifying and wreckers and carriers. So within this presentation right here, we didn't see anything about last mile delivery, you know, custom fitted last mile delivery products for both North America and globally. So Oshkosh presented that they were leveraging their strengths with disruptive technologies for electrification for commercial vehicles, autonomy and active safety, intelligent products, digital manufacturing and advanced analytics. What also represented a possible economic moat for Oshkosh was a thousand plus patents for their new product innovations. So if we look at their revenue by geography, they've got 88% of their money coming in from North America. And looking at their revenue by segment, we've got 36% access equipment, 33% defense, 17% fire and emergency, and 14% commercial. So with Workhorse, we're having a lot of problems surrounding manufacturing and production. So with Oshkosh, I was going to see, do we have the same problem? So Oshkosh has actually produced 240,000 high mobility multi-wheeled vehicles. So as you can see here, it's like a kind of military Jeep. And if they're able to produce this at mass scale, then surely they must be able to produce in terms of um, the contract for the USPS. So the presentation went on to talk about defense and it talked about fire, commercial vehicles, electrification for all these industries. However, we were looking for last mile delivery and we wanted to see their focus if Oshkosh is going to focus on this industry. Overall, Oshkosh looks like a decent company, well positioned for success. So in terms of their markets, they're focusing on defense, you know, fire trucks, refuse collection like trash trucks. And they're also getting secular tailwinds, so they're looking at population growth, household formation, and aged fleets. So this keyword right here on aged fleets is what we're looking at. So does this aged fleets mean that they're still targeting, you know, the USPS contracts? 
because nothing in this presentation has stated that they're in the last mile delivery sector and that's where they're focusing their energy and their efforts for next year or the years to follow. Ford just came out with this bad boy. So Ford unveils the 2022 e-Transit, it's $45,000 electric workhorse. I see what they did there. Look at him with the workhorse. Oh yeah, so now we're talking, we're talking about Ford right here, baby. So I think they're gonna be focusing on the construction industry with this kind of electrified white van. In England, we got all these white vans, white van man. So they're gonna be focusing on targeting this kind of audience. The e-Transit is just one piece of the company's 11.5 billion investment in electrification but it could be its most important one so ford has largely focused its electrification efforts on the consumer market notably the mustangs what's really interesting is all vehicles will have an eight year 100,000 mile electric vehicle component warranty keyword component warranty also the price of this will be good so it's looking to start at under $45,000 for US fleet customers. This is slightly cheaper than Workhorse's C1000 model, but comes with a catch because their battery, a 67 kilowatt battery, can only travel between 108 miles and 126 miles maximum. And that is pretty rubbish for a vehicle because Workhorse's model can travel 160 miles. Not only that, but they also have drone package delivery. And although Ford has mentioned that they have telematics to track the analytics of the vehicles for fleet owners, they haven't offered drone flight delivery. They also stated that they'll have both AC and DC super fast charging. So they're saying that they're gonna be able to connect a charging station that's gonna be able to fully charge the van within eight hours. TechCrunch also interviewed a man called Yaro Hetman, who is the global marketing director for electric trucks, vans, and commercial vehicles. So Yarrow Hetman has stated that the company analyzed more than 30 million commercial miles traveled in North America with its existing combustion engine transit vans and that Ford learned that the average commercial van in the US covers 74 miles a day. So they must be talking about commercial vans within the construction industry because the male vans often travel a lot more than 74 miles a day. So Ford's F-150 truck will not be arriving until mid-2022. So unless the USPS plans to extend the contract and not give it out yet, then Ford will not be able to produce this van until mid 2022. This then brings us to the worst case scenario that could happen. If the USPS then decides to delay the contract, they may allow bids from other companies. And in Europe, we have this company called Arrival. So this is a company coming out of the UK. It's a very fast growing company that's caught a lot of interest. And they do anything from electrified buses, two electrified arrival vans. These vans can be custom made and tailored to the specifics for each client. So this company has been around for a while. It's been here since 2015 and it's also grown to a team of over 1200 people across 11 cities and eight countries around the world. They also recently secured a $118 million investment. So this article is from the 16th of October, 2020. So Arrival, the technology company focused on commercial electric vehicles has raised $118 million from funds managed by BlackRock. So the funds will be used to support the company's growth plans as it ramps up vehicle production, including the launch of Arrival's first US micro factory in South Carolina. Earlier in the year, Arrival managed to secure $111.5 million in funding with Kia and Hyundai as investors. So this article is from January 20, 2020, and here you can see that Arrival managed to secure a big juicy chunk of money. So Arrival offers an electric van with up to 200 mile range and 500 cubic feet of cargo space. So these stats are actually better than Workhorse's range, which offers a 160 mile battery. They also save more money by eschewing metal stamping and auto painting. Arrival has already made a major sale in terms of 10,000 electric vans secured for the logistics company UPS with the further option to actually sell another 10,000 to them. So apparently there's increasing demand for e-commerce. So they're predicted to reach 8 million commercial and passenger fleets by 2030 in the US alone. So Arrival's micro factories can produce around 10,000 vans or 1,000 buses per year. However, Arrival is not expecting to begin operations until the second quarter of 2021 and they're not looking to produce vehicles until the fourth quarter of 2021. 
so as long as the USPS awards the contract by the end of this year, it doesn't look like they'll be looking for new bids. Overall, I think we have to sit tight and wait for the USPS contract to be announced, and I think Workhorse still has a very good shot at getting at least 25% of the contract. Mr. Invest a lot, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you smash the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Mr. Invest a lot, over and out.